Prodigy of Mob Deep is our guest for another 45 minutes or so. Then we're going to get a pop in from Mike Adams uh, on uh, the police and the feds raiding folks selling uh, mangoes, papayas, other evil things like uh, raw milk, cheese. And they got them on a $120,000 bond each. Public store. I, uh, again, to be technical, I bought food at another store this weekend, but my wife went to Whole Foods and got the uh, raw milk cheese. It's our favorite. We've been buying it for a couple of years now that it's available. It tastes completely different. So are they going to raid Whole Foods here in Austin? I mean, this is incredible stuff, so that's coming up. Now, Now, following this, where's the stock market right now? Because, guys, I know, I know it's plunging as we speak. Dow plunges 350 points uh, on total fear, and it's still dropping. The dollar's dropping. Gold uh, has, has blasted up to, what is it, 1,680-something? Uh, give me the latest on that. It's all moving up quick because they're globally devaluing the dollar. They're talking about tax increases uh, and super Congress. This is a tax increase to devalue your money. And, and if you're wealthy, it's going to hurt you. If you're middle class, it's going to hurt you really bad. And if you're poor, you're in trouble because the wages aren't going up. But what you can buy with that money is going down. My grandma and her Social Security, she worked at a print shop till she was 70 something years old. And my grandma can't basically live without us helping her. OK, my grand uh, think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Think about what's happening. This is bondage. This is bondage. The globalists are destroying the world economy. Their carbon taxes, all of it. We're going to be breaking it down. Going back to Prodigy of Mob Deep, a legendary uh, Grammy Award winning rapper uh, who goes right back to the start of all the big superstars we have today. He was getting into uh, his awakening uh, and he started to, uh, you, you, uh, you'd gotten to the point of talking to folks selling books on the street. Please continue. Yeah, so um, there was this guy named Dr. York. You know, he had, he had a community in Brooklyn called the Ansar Law Community. And um, basically he had his people out in the street selling books and the Muslim oils and different things like that, like incense and stuff like that. So I used to stop at the table to pick up this coconut oil because I liked how it smelled, you know, because the girls liked it. So at the table, they would sell these books written by Dr. Yoke, you know what I mean? And it was a book. They were, the first books that I've read were books on, like, the, um, the holidays. One book was about Christmas, one was about Easter, and, and, and it showed, like, the origin of these uh, pagan you know, evil holidays. So I picked it up, and I was like, what the hell is this? Because they had one, the Christmas book had the uh, Santa Claus looking like Satan on the cover. So it was just, like, strange. I never saw nothing like that before. You know, I was only, like, 16. So I picked up the book, and I started getting into it, and I started learning who Dr. York is and what he's about and the stuff that he teaches. And then I started reading a lot of his books. And uh, I realized that you know, this dude was basically uh, teaching, you know, people, especially black people, you know, about our origin and where we come from and how we, you know, we, we have a, a a great history in this world and how we were, like, basically uh, brainwashed, you know, and soul washed of all of our history and of who we are and everything. Well, that's right. If you go back to Roman times, no one looked at and said black men uh, were inferior. Uh, I mean, that wasn't even you know debated or or discussed. And 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 you can lay out your historical review. But what really, from my research, you go back 500 years ago, they wanted to start this transatlantic slave trade, and they had indentured servants who were white in Europe. But they said, hey, we can use Bible passages and distort them, dealing with Ham and Cain and Abel. And say that these people deserve to be slaves, and it actually took some selling. But because the sailors themselves from Europe were mainly pressed and slaves on the ships, uh, if you actually research it, uh, I mean, most of them were captured and put on the, uh, the, the the ships to run them. That's why there were so many people breaking off and becoming pirates. Uh, that then they sold that idea, and that really is an idea that didn't exist till what 500 years ago. Yeah, exactly. You know, they 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 flipped it. And a lot of the, the, the Bible, so-called um, Bible stories and all that, or whatever. So, you know, Dr. York was just putting it out there, you know what I mean? And really, you know, exposing it to the world, you know, and, and sharing the information with everybody.
with everybody and accepting everybody also. You know, no matter what color you are, no matter what race you are, he was teaching that this is information that need to be, you know, just that, that that needs to be put out there, needs to be learned. That can help sure. Save your when soul. did you start learning uh, about the Illuminati? Because you told me you've seen the Obama deception, you know, the, the radio show. Uh, uh, you, uh, I said, well, what's your favorite clip? And you said the Bohemian Grove, the the David Gergen situation. Yeah, yeah, I mean, through his books, you know, through Doc books, that's how I learned about it. That's how I bumped into it because you know it all coincides with each other. You know, what I mean, once you start learning the origin of things and you start learning, uh, you know, the background of things, what was going on, you're gonna stumble on this word Illuminati, and you're gonna stumble on, you know, the the whole diabolical plan and and and, and the whole grand scheme of things of what's happening. You know what I mean? So. That's how I bumped into it. And then, you know, later on, years down the line, you know, I started doing research to make, I'm like, is this man, I'm like, is, this is too unbelievable. The information that I was learning was like too incredible. You know what I mean? So it forces you to do your own research. It forces you, like back then, it wasn't no internet when I was growing up. You know what I mean? So I had to go to the library, you know what I mean? And check books out. That's what I did, the exact same thing. So you, you've been awake for close to 30 years. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been learning ever since I was like 16. I've been learning, doing research. So you know, I'm 36 now. You know what I mean? So that's about yeah, 20 years. You know what I mean? I've been really doing my research. You know what I mean? And, and um, studying this whole thing. You know, so I started in the libraries, finding old books, and just like uh, passing around information. I used to get passed around the street, like uh, different VHS videotapes. That uh, a lot of a lot of the people that I knew in the street life, like a lot of my criminal friends, uh, you know, they they weren't all just uh, you know, just dumb criminals running around. A lot of them were very intelligent. You know what I mean? A lot of them. Well, that's the economy, like they say in The Godfather, that for a hundred years. They've been shipping the illegal contraband into those black neighborhoods to make that the zone where it was acceptable. So people say, oh, look, these people are criminals. Well, the point is that's that's the the economy that was set up there by the system. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it's, and it's, a, um, you know, it's a stereotypical thing that people look at us like, oh, whatever, he's just a, or whatever, you know what I mean? But anyway, a lot of my friends, you know what I mean, we would pass around information to each other videotapes are like uh uh the Lum um I think it was called the Illuminati two thousand uh it was, it was this crazy show that we used to watch and they had uh I forget the guys' names on there. Um, Anthony um, Hilder? Yeah, exactly. Anthony Hilder and the other guy with the glasses. Uh Ted Gunderson, he uh, Ted Gunderson, he just died over the weekend. Oh yeah? Yeah. Well well uh Jordan Maxwell. Oh yeah. They used to be on those tapes a lot with uh, Anthony Hilda. Hilda. So we used to watch those. We used to pass them around. And this is how we got more into it. We like, damn, I started seeing these tapes. I'm like, hold up. This is the same thing that Dr. York was talking about. So I started, the dots started connecting. You know what I mean? That I, when the internet came around, I would, I would uh, you know, research all the things that I was learning from, from Hilda, Maxwell, York, and from everybody. And then I bumped into you, your information. You know, Alex Jones. And I'm like, well, everybody is saying the same thing. You know what I mean? It got to be real. You know what I mean? And we'll look at Skull and Bones. ABC got footage. They're worshiping Satan, doing mock human sacrifices. Then I go into Bohemian Grove. Here are the Christian conservative leaders and corporate leaders worshiping a big stone owl. And, and and bringing male prostitutes in, and people are like, oh, let them have fun. The point is, they're not who they say they are out in the public. Yeah, they're doing all this ritualistic murder and and, and rituals on little, you know, they they, they, doing, they molesting little kids, doing sex, um, satanic sex rituals. Like, this stuff is really going on in this world. Like, you know what I mean? You got, you got, you know, sick people like Jeffrey Dahmer and, and and different people like that, and I, I believe that it was so, it was a different background to it. Of why he was doing what he was doing, I think it was some ritualistic things going on. Absolutely, you know I mean? they set him and up as that. one of their little ghouls. They always have their their Renfields or their Igors, uh, who 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 are their minion servants.
Then they, but look, it's now come out in the Chicago Tribune that Halliburton and DynCorp run giant child kidnapping rings. Guess who runs most of the private CPS grabbing? DynCorp. And then they get right. caught in Europe and Asia running little kidnapping rings. Well, they just do it out in the open here and take your kids, and, and then you don't know where they go. I mean, it, it came out in CNN in Florida five years ago. Thousands of children missing, and they found a bunch of them dead. Nobody gets in trouble, just like they're dealing the drugs. I want to talk about that with Prodigy Mob Deep on the other side of this break. We'll give you his websites, tell you about his new book as well. Stay with us. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. Everything is proceeding as the New World Order has foreseen it. Lord Rothschild and Rockefeller are pleased. Gains for the year erased in the stock market. Deeper than post-tarp plunge. S&P hits correction territory. Gold soars, then plummets. Dow plummets. Ladies and gentlemen, we told you that as soon as they passed that, the economy would start nosediving. It's designed to do it. But uh, if I don't get into this with you, people are going to get mad, prodigy. Obviously <laughs> out there, uh, constantly, you know, you've been talking about the different icon rappers that are making hundreds of millions of bucks, that many of which you, you know, came up with and knew, who are just constantly selling the establishment view of the world, nothing but materialism, and constantly showing Illuminati symbolism. Uh, I mean, can you talk about why you think they're doing this? Uh, are they trying to brag that they're with the Illuminati? Do they want to get into the Illuminati? Are they part of the Illuminati? And uh, uh, why are you angry about this? I mean, it got to a point in my life where I had to step back and look at my own self. You know what I mean? I had to look myself in the mirror like, like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Um, I was promoting a lot of the wrong things, you know. And at the same time, I was putting the information that I was learning through all these books, you know what I mean, from you, from, you know, Hilda, from York, and from everybody that I was learning from, I was putting the information in my music, you know what I mean? I was, I was like mixing the medicine with the food, you know what I mean? So, so they wouldn't be able to really taste it, but it was in there. You know what I mean? No, I got it. You were going with the bling and, and you know, some of the nomenclature, but it was so, uh, basically, uh, people would come check out the real message. Exactly. You know what I mean? I had to, I had to mix it in there somehow to get people's, to spark people's curiosity. Like, hold up, Prodigy talking about partying and this and that, but hold up, what's he talking about right here? What does this mean? To spark their interest. I was trying to be strategic about it almost, you know what I mean? To spark people's interest and in what else I had to say. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I got to a point in my life, in my career, where, you know, it's easy to get caught up in that lifestyle. You know what I mean? You know, fast money and all that type of stuff. The, you know, the, the sex, drugs, and rock and roll, quote unquote. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I, I started slipping at some point, and I had to catch myself. You know what I mean? And look myself in the mirror like, yo, dogs, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, you really bugging right now. Now, it's time to go all the way, you know what I mean? Because you're bugging, you know what I mean? So I had to catch myself, and I got to the point where I just got fed up, and I got pissed off, and I said, you know what? I'm not rocking jewelry no more, number one. I'm not I'm not doing certain things anymore, and I'm doing it to make a statement, you know what I mean? To let people say, well, why is Pete doing that? Let's, let's listen to what's the, what he has to say, you know what I mean? And um, basically, I started, you know, looking at the other people in the industry, and I just started picking out certain things that I've seen, like, why is this person doing this, you know, uh, Jay-Z was just one example of, and one of the biggest examples of, uh, you know, artists in the music industry, you know what I mean, because he's so popular and so big, you know, um, and uh, the community where he comes from out there in Brooklyn, this is where, you know, the guy Dr. York is also from, and Jay-Z was part of that community, the Dr. York community, you know what I mean? And he, he had learned all that information that York was putting out and all the information that I know, you know what I mean? Jay-Z was learning that also, so he knows what time it is, you know what I mean? But he just doesn't promote it. You're you know saying I mean? bottom he line, in a way, he's a turncoat. You know he knows all this information, but he's clearly decided to join it. He's decided to, hey, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Benedict Arnold this. Yeah, I mean, from the looks of things, it looks like 
uh, you know, that he has chosen sides. You know what I mean? Um, for lack of a better term, he he's chosen a side. You know what I mean? And the side that he chose is money, power, and uh, you know he doesn't really care to spread any type of information that might help save somebody's soul.